ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر امور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد قال العلامه امام سعد رحمه الله عليه continuing going over those beautiful lines of poetry which outline the description and characteristics of those ibad of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will be happy when they meet their lord those lines of poetry which outline the provisions that are needed to undertake the journey and traveling back to Allah or traveling to Allah and the hereafter the imam rahimahullah ta'ala he says abdu al-ilaha ala i'tiqad huzurihi فَتَبَوَّأُوا فِي مَنْزِلَ أَوْ فِي مَنْزِلِ الْإِحْسَانِ He says and they worship Allah they worship Allah ala i'tiqad they worship Allah upon the belief upon the creed huzurihi they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the creed while believing that Allah Ta'ala he is present and that he is watching them fatabawwa'u fi manzil al-ihsan so therefore they would reach the level of ihsan they will reach the level of ihsan and as we know from the hadith of jibril alayhi salatu wassalam that Islam comprises of three parts or three categories or three levels however which way you want to articulate that or whatever verbiage yani you would use for that al islam wal iman wal ihsan fa qala imam sa'ni hadhihi manzila yuqalu laha manzilatu al ihsan he said this is the level in which it is called the level of al ihsan wa hiya kama fassaraha an nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam it is as the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he has explained it as it comes in the hadith of jibril the hadith of jibril which is mutafiq alayh from the hadith of abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and it is also collected by muslim only and that is from the narration of umar radiyallahu ta'ala an al kull inside of this hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he explained what is al ihsan he says an ta'budu allah ka'annaka tarah fa in lam takun tarah fa innahu yarak al has comes in one narration an ta'budu allah wahda ka'annaka tarah فَإِنْ لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاهُ 
to worship Allah alone as if you are seeing him and if you do not see him or since you do not see him then you know that he is seeing you to worship Allah as if you see him and since you don't see him then you know that what he is seeing you this is as the Prophet said, let me explain what is Al-Ihsan. The, the Imam Rahimullah Ta'ala says, فَإِذَا تَسَوَّرَ الْإِنسَانُ هَذَا مُقَامْ فِي جَمِيعِ الْأَحْوَالِهِ He says, so if an individual he imagines, he visualizes this level in all of his affairs, in all of his affairs he visualizes this level of Al-Ihsan. Al-Ihsan in which Imam Ibn Qayyim rahimullah ta'ala, he says here, Lubbul Iman, that it is the, the source, or it is the, 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 the center of Al-Iman, and it is, the, it is the spirit of Iman, it is the spirit of faith, and the center of faith, وَكَمَالُهُ, and it is the completion of faith. وَهَذِهِ manzila تَجْمَعُ جَمِيعِ الْمَنَازِلِ and this level, it encompasses all of the different levels. It encompasses all of those levels in which we were speaking about from the levels of ex- excellence, huh? so on and so forth. فَجَمِيعُهَا مُنْطُوِيَةٌ فِيهَا So all of the levels, all of the levels of superiority, all of the high levels, all of the outstanding and superior levels, then they will be intertwined inside of the level of Al-Ihsan. So Al-Ihsan is something that we have to aspire for. It is something that is tremendous indeed. So the Imam Rahimullah Ta'ala, he says, so if an individual he envisions, he visualizes Al-Ihsan in all of his affairs, in everything in which he does, in all of his affairs, he says, لا سيما حال العبادة He said, especially while worshipping. Especially during worship. Especially while worshipping. مَنَعَهُ مِنَ ال he said then this will prevent him this will prevent him from being distracted this will prevent him from his attention being drawn away from his Lord so especially when we're worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have to remind ourselves we have to visualize this reality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sees us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's watching us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He hears us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows what we're doing. If we remember this when we're praying, then this will help us. This will help us into keeping our concentration and not having our minds wander while we're praying. This will help us into having khushur by knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's watching us. So if an individual when he's worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if he is seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will find that his mind it won't be distracted. You will find that his mind it won't wander. You will find he won't be daydreaming when he's supposed to be worshipping his Lord Azza wa Jal. The, the Imam he says, Bal aqbala bi kuliyatihi ala Allah, but rather he will turn with his whole person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will, he will turn with the whole of his person, with the whole of his self to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa tawajjah. Wa tawajjah bi qalbihi ilayhi. And he will turn to him with his heart. His heart will be turned to his Lord Azza wa Jal. Muta'addiban fi'ibadatihi He will have the proper mannerisms He will bring forward the proper characteristics And the proper mannerisms When he's worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Atiyan bi jameer Ma yukamiluha He will come with all of those things That will complete his worship He will bring all of those things That will complete his worship Mushtaniban and he will stay away from, he will avoid all of those things that will decrease, all of those things that will lessen the reward, lessen his worship. He will stay away from these things that will decrease his worship. Naam. 
وهذه منزلة من أعظم منازل المنازل وأجلها and this أو وأجلها and this level is from the greatest of the levels and the most noble of them it is from the greatest of the levels and the most noble of them so therefore as the Imam he says ولكنها تحتاج إلى تدريج للنفوس شيئا في شيئا شيئا فشيئا شيئا فشيئا so this will require from an individual that he will have to train himself. This will require from an individual that he will have to take steps of progress. He will have to take gradual steps of progress towards this noble goal. He will have to take steps of progress gradually towards this noble goal. Shayan for shayan, bit by bit, step by step. Bit by bit, step by step. So it will require from us to reach such a level, it will require from us a great training, it will require from us a great effort, it will require from us to put forth a great level of energy in the attainment of it. وَلَا يَزَالُ عَبْدُ يُعَوِّدُهَا نَفْسَهُ حَتَّى إِلَيْهَا وَتَعْتَادَهَا وَتَعْتَادَهَا It will require that an individual, he will have to be consistent. He will have to be steady. He will have to consistently train his soul to become accustomed to it until it draws near to it and until it is acclimated towards it. Until it draws near to it and until it is acclimated upon this high level, until it is acclimated upon reaching this level where he worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if he sees him and since he does not see him then he knows that Allah sees him or sees her. فَيَعِيشِ الْعَبْدِ So that the life of the Abd so that the life of the Abd, Qalil Al-Ain Bil-Rabbi, the life of the Abd, it will become the source, or the life of the Abd, yani, it will be enriched because his Lord will be the coolant of his eye. The coolant of his eye. Farihan, Masroorun. He will be happy. He will be overjoyed. He will be ecstatic. Bi-Qurbihi. He will be ecstatic by drawing near to his Lord. He will be ecstatic. He will be happy by being near to his Lord. And this is the way that you find those who are upon Ihsan, those who worship Allah upon this level, those who worship Allah as if they see him. And since they do not see him, they know Allah sees them. Those who worship Allah upon this level, you will find that their life is sweet. Because in every direction, everywhere that they're turning, they remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching them. So this will be that which will govern their actions. This will be that which will make them hold back. That which will make them stop from saying that statement or doing that action because they know Allah is watching me, Allah is looking at me. This will be that which will make yani, them bring their acts of worship in the most beautified of manners because they will know as I'm praying right now, my Lord, He is watching me. So they will excel in their prayer. This is that which will make them excel in their payment of the zakat because they know my Lord is watching me. My Lord, He sees me. My Lord, He hears me. My Lord, He knows what is in my heart. So therefore, He will give and He will give. He will give in the most excellent of manners. Likewise, when they are fasting, they will fast in the most excellent of manners because throughout the course of their day while they're fasting, they will know Allah Ta'ala is watching me. He hears me. He knows what I'm doing. He knows what I'm thinking. He knows what is in my heart. He knows my secrets and that which is more secret than that. And He knows what that which is apparent. Allah Ta'ala, He knows everything. So therefore, He will worship Allah Ta'ala in the most excellent of manners. He will fast in the most excellent of manners because He knows Allah is watching Him. Allah is watching Him. And likewise, with the rest of the acts of worship from Hajj, from Umrah, from uh, righteousness to one's parents, so on and so forth, He will be doing everything what? Because He knows Allah is watching Him. He will be doing everything what? to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you will find that any human being that is there in the mix, any human being that he deals with becomes what arbitrary. 
He treats him in the best of manners. Why? Because he's trying to please his Lord, Azza wa Jal. He deals with him in the most excellent and most finest of manners. What? To please Allah, Azza wa Jal. So although what he's doing may bring pleasure to those who he's being nice to, you find that's not his main concern. His main concern is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So because of this reality, the Imam, he moves on and he says, نَسَهُ الْخَلِيقَ فِي رِضَى مُحَبِّهِ أَوْ فِي رِضَى مَحْبُوبِهِ بِعِلْمِ وَالْإِرْشَادِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ he says, so therefore they will give advice, they will give good advice to the khaliqa. Nah, seeking the pleasure of the one whom they love, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they will give forth this advice. They will give forth this advice with knowledge, with direction, with guidance, and in the most excellent and best of manners. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of this lot. هذا أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا فإنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد The Imam رحمه الله تعالى He goes on and he says نسح الخليق في رضا محبوبهم بالعلم والإرشاد والإحسان صحب الخلائق بجسومهم أو صحب الخلائق بالجسوم وإنما أرواحهم في منزل فوقاني He says they give the good advice They give the good advice to the creation seeking the pleasure of their beloved one meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with knowledge and guidance and in the most excellent of manners They accompany they accompany the creation with their bodies or they accompany the creation in body but rather their souls are in levels that are lofty their souls are in levels that's lofty meaning that what that they accompany the creation but their company of them and their treatment of them is almost arbitrary. Why? Because their hearts, their soul is attached to higher, better, bigger, and better things. Their soul is attached to their Lord Azza wa Jal. So their motivations is beyond that which you'll find the lowly motivations are sparked from. The Imam he says, وَهَذِهِ مَعَ الْخَلْقِ وَهَذِهِ حَالُهُمْ مَعَ الْخَلْقِ He said, and this is their condition when they're with the creation. This is, what, this is their condition when they're with the creation. They're with them in person, yes. With their minds, their souls, their motivations, their, 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 and, and the like. It's somewhere else. It's not there, but it's in high levels. He says, وَأَكْمَلُ حَالٍ وَأَجَلُّهَا And this is the best of conditions and this is the most perfect of them and the most noble of them. فَأَبْدَوْ لَهُمْ غَايَةِ النُّصْحِ He says, so therefore they will give to them the epitome of advice. They will give to them the epitome of advice. You understand? They will give to the creation the epitome of advice, not fearing the blame of the blamers. Not fearing the blame of the blamers. 
Because those who are avid and giving advice, those who are avid and looking out for the best of the people and directing them to that which is best, you will find that they won't be the most beloved of the people. Although they intend for the people that which is good, they intend for the people yani, to be saved away and prevented from that which is bad, you will find the reality is, is that a lot of people like bad stuff. A lot of people like what's not good for them. So when someone is encouraging to that which is better, that which which is best for them, that which is good for them, you'll find that they'll take issue with that. You advising a man to do what is right, he don't want to do what's right, he's taking issue with you. You advising a man to stay away from the evil, he don't want to stay away from the evil, he want to do the evil, so now he's taking issue with you. Man, why are you trying to stop me? Huh? And we find this is the case. Because when it comes to all of the description in which the, the Imam he is mentioning, remember, the prophets and the messengers, they excelled in each and every one of these lofty descriptions to the epitome that could be attained therein. They were the most excellent of examples in reaching these levels. But you find that even with that, that what? That they had enemies. That people lied about them. That people lied on them. That people fought against them. Some of the prophets were, were, were killed. Some of the prophets were killed. Because the people didn't want to hear what they were saying. But remember, those who give forth this advice, they're not worrying about what's going to be the reaction of the people. They're not worrying about that. They give forth the advice with ilm, with knowledge. They give forth the advice irshad, with guidance. They give forth the advice bil-ihzan, in the most excellent of manners. So they say it, they give it in the best of way, with wisdom in the best manner. They try to do everything that they can possibly do to make sure that they give the advice in the most easiest way for the advice to be accepted. In the most gentlest of ways when, when it's called for gentleness. In a stern way when sternness is called for. They try to put everything in its proper place huh? and to give it in the best way possible. But after that, what? The acceptance is from Allah Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala, He guides whom He pleases. Allah Ta'ala, He will guide to accept that advice whom He pleases to accept that advice. And those who are not guided to accept the advice, they won't accept the advice. But they do not fear. But they don't fear the blame of the blamers. They don't fear the blame of the blamers. So you have to remember that anybody who's treading upon the way of the prophets and the messengers, when you tread upon the way of the prophets and the messengers, you will receive some of what they received. From harm, from people lying about you, from people making up disrespectful names and, and calling you and mocking you, and so on and so forth, fighting against you, and so on and so forth. You will find that. Because that's happened to those who were better than us. This is how they were treated. So no doubt we will be treated in a in, 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 in likewise manner. Ala kulli hal, they give forth the advice huh? in the best of possible manners. They give forth the advice in the best of possible manners. And they don't keep it back saying, but I'm scared the people that won't like me no more. I'm scared the people not going to invite me no more. I'm scared the people might leave the message. No, you give forth the advice, Yanni. Those who accept it, accept it. Those who reject it, reject it. As long as you give it in a good way. In a good manner. The tawfiq is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huh? The tawfiq is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't judge it based upon that. We don't judge it based upon numbers is what we mean. We don't judge it based upon numbers. No. No. The fruit is valued by what? By, by the quality of it. Not the, the amount. The quality. The quality. Huh? But whether it's full to the, to the, to the, to the brim and this and that. No, no. Nah, nah. We don't worry about that. Because the ibadah is what giving forth the advice, as the Prophet said, said, at deen al nasiha, that the, the deen is giving forth good advice. So the ibadah is in giving the advice in the best of possible manners. Why do they do this? The Imam he says, Because they love for them what they love for themselves from good. This is why they call them to that which is good. And they hate for uh, the people what they hate for themselves from evil. 
They call them because they love for them what they love for themselves. They hate for them what they will hate to happen to themselves. So this is why they call them to the good and forbid them from the evil. So they strive to remove evil from reaching them with every way that is at their disposal. Every way that is possible for them. They try to stop the harm from reaching the people. And they strive their best to make sure that good reaches the people at every means at their disposal. من أمرهم بالمعروف from ordering them to do good ونهيهم عن المنكر and forbidding them from doing evil وإتعامهم وإتعام جائعهم and by feeding the hungry from amongst them وكسوة عاريهم and by clothing those who don't have clothes and those who are naked from amongst them وإغاثة المنهوفهم and by helping those who are in distress from the people وتعليم جاهلهم and by teaching the, the ignorant from amongst them نعم وردع uh, and by restraining the oppressors from amongst them. You see, this is a characteristic of the good people. Is that they restrain the oppressor. They don't sit back and watch the oppression, but they restrain the, uh, repre- uh, the oppression to the best of their ability. If they can say a word, then they say a word. If they are in positions of authority like our leaders, then they could restrain and stop the oppressor physically. Huh? This is for our leaders. They can stop it physically. But for less than the leaders, then what? Then we then we try to say a word, or then we inform the leaders of what's going on. Then we inform the leaders of what's going on, so they can handle it in the best manner that is fit. But alakulin, we strive to stop the oppression. We don't sit back and watch it happen and get quiet. No, no, we strive to stop it. And we strive to help those who are oppressed. See, some people, what? I don't want to get involved. But you know what they're doing to the brother is wrong, right? You know what they're doing to the sister is wrong, right? But I don't want to get involved because then they're going to turn on me. Now, see, you know what? These people, they don't worry about that. They turn on us. Okay, so what? But we're still going to speak a word that is correct. We're still going to help those who are oppressed. Why? For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are patient on harms of the people because when you're acting like this and you give doubt to the people, they're going to hurt you, they're going to harm you. So they're patient upon their harms. But listen, and the Imam he says, And they stop their harm from reaching the people. Somebody harm you, right? Somebody oppress you, huh? You can turn back and harm them back. You can turn around and oppress them too. See, sometimes people in there, when they are oppressed and fighting the oppression that they have been shown, become what? Oppressors themselves. They go too far. They themselves become oppressors. They themselves now are held liable for their actions. But these people, they don't do that. They repel evil with that which is better. So they hold back their harm from reaching the people. Although the people harm them, they don't retaliate. They don't seek revenge and, 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 and go out and harm people. No, they respond in the best of manners and they stop themselves from hurting the people. Well, just so with all of this, you find that their accompanying them is only apparent, is only in body alone. But their but their hearts and their souls in huh? Their souls then they will be revolving huh? around the one that they love, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And they'll be seeking by being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the greater portion. And sometimes they will break down in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam, it gets rough, it gets tough. We break down in front of Allah, we complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَتَخْشَعُوا And they fear and have reverence for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَتَخْدَعُوا لَدَيْهِ And they humble themselves in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. طَوْرًا طَوْرًا تَشْكُرُهُ بِحُبِّهِ And this is their condition. Thanking and showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by their love. وَتَدُلُّوا عَلَيْهِ 
الاستحضار ببره وقربه and that which points us is, and is illustrative that they are those who remember that Allah Ta'ala is present and that Allah Ta'ala is watching them and hearing them huh? is what is their righteousness that emanates from them in seeking to be near to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala ثُمَّ تَمِيلُوا إِلَىٰ مَرَاضِيهِ and then they lean and they go for and they incline towards that which Allah is pleased with huh? وَتَجْتَهِدُوا فِي عِبَادَتِهِ And they work hard and they strive in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَتُحْسِنُوا إِلَىٰ مَخْلُقَاتِهِ And they show and they act in the most excellent of manners to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though that may not be what they being shown, even though that's maybe not how the creation is treating them, they treat the creation in the best of the manners. The Imam, he says, فَهَاؤُلَا هُمُ النَّاسِ He says, so these ones... They're the real people. These ones who have these characteristics, they're the real people. بَلْ هُمِ الْعُقَلَاءُ But these are those who are deeply and profoundly intelligent. These are those of grace. These are the real people. When you see these descriptions now, maybe we understand better the statement of Abdullah bin Abbas and the statement of Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنهم when they said, ذهب الناس وبقي النسناس. When they said, the people have left. Because these are the characteristics of the people. huh? When we, when we weigh these, the people according to these characteristics, Ya yeah, subhanallah, we understand better what they were saying. He said, the people have left. The people have left and the only thing that remains is nisnas. The only thing that remains is nisnas. So it was said to Abu Huraira, فَمَنْ نِسْنَاسِ So what is nisnas? What is What do you intend by that? Huh? Because a nisnas is like the small, it's like the monkey, the little small monkey. Huh? Do you say that? That's nisnas. So he elaborated and he said, قَالَ مُتَشَابِهُونَ مُتَشَابِهُونَ النَّاسِ أَوْ يُشْبِهُونَ النَّاسِ وَلَيْسُوا بِالنَّاسِ he said they are similar to the people, but they're not really from the people. They're people like, man like, similar to the people, but they're not really from the people. Why? Because they don't have the characteristics of the people. They don't act like human beings are supposed to act. When we weigh these and we look at the people, then we see and we understand better what they said. They have been nas for bucky on this nas. The people have left and the only thing that remains is a bunch of monkey acting individuals or a bunch of man-like individuals. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of the real people. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq in having uh, and, and being adorned with the likes of these outstanding characteristics. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He makes us of those who are pleased when we meet Him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He makes us of those who are entered into the Jannah. Bila hisab wa bila adab with no reckoning and with no punishment. Hada ya ibad faqimus salah.